This video discusses Chinua Achbe's Arrow of God, which was published in the year 1964. Chinua Achbe is a Nigerian novelist, poet, critic, who is regarded as the dominant figure of modern African literature. His first novel was Things Fall Apart, which is published in the year 1958, and then he published his second novel, No Longer at Ease, in the year 1960. The third novel is Arrow of God, published in the year 1964. These three are the novels which is called as African Trilogy. Also, all these three novels have similar setting and similar themes. Chinua Achbe, he is referred to as the father of African literature. If you want to listen about the novel Things Fall Apart, please do check down in the description box below. Chinua Achbe, he is born in Okidi, which is British Nigeria. He spends his childhood knowing about Igbo traditional culture and he is influenced by post-colonial Christianity. Let us have a small outline about Arrow of God. This arrow of God is set in Igbo land, which is in southeastern Nigeria. This novel is set in the second decade of 20th century. The novel gives a brief picture about the traditional culture, that is Igbo, and the challenges of colonial presence and shifting times. Let us first see the characters of this novel. First is Ezilu. Ezilu's father and his forefathers are priests. He is also a priest. He is actually called as the chief priest of Ulu. Ulu is the divine god. This Ulu god is worshipped by six villages that comprises Umoro. Ezilu is popularly known for tracking the new moon. And he announces the festival dates in order to lead important rituals. Nwaka. Nwaka is a wealthy man from Unemnero. Unemnero is one of the villages of Umaro. This Nwaka and Ezilu, they always have a dispute. Next is TK Winterbottom. He is the British district officer in the region. He is called as Winter Bota by the native people in Igbo. Ezilu has three wives. His senior wife is Mefi. She has three sons, Obika. Obika is the second oldest son. Next is Odichi. Odichi is the middle son of Ezilu from his second wife, Ugoi. Ezilu sends Odichu to missionary school at the church. He had a hope that Odichu will become fluent in the ways and religion of the white man. So he wants Odichu to become knowledgeable, informative. Next is Idogo. Idogo is the oldest son with his third wife, Okuata. Ezilu has Akyuki. Akyuki is the daughter from Okuata. Next is Tony Clark. Tony Clark is the assistant district officer who is newly appointed to Oak Ferry. Next is Moses Unachuku. He is an African carpenter but he converts to Christianity from Umaru. John Good Country is a convert from Niger Delta who becomes the head of the church in Umaru. Next is John Wright. Wright works for the public works department. He supervises the new road which is laid between Okperi and Umaru. Next is Nuafo. Nuafo is the youngest son and the favorite son of Ezilu from his wife Ugoi. Ezilu actually wants Nuafo to take the priesthood after his father. Nuafo is interested in his father's work right from his childhood. 
to take up Ezilu's priest duties. Next is Okbuki Akibu. Akibu is a good friend of Ezilu. Next is Matifi. Matifi is a senior wife and the mother of Obika, Oilibi, and Ojigo. Yugoi is Ezilu's younger wife and the mother of Odichi, Nuofo, and Obiageli. Next is John Nodika. Nodika is from Umoniro, but he lives in Okperi. He works for Winterbottom. Ezidimili. Ezidimili is a priest of Umononara. He is a servant of Python god Idimili. Next is Akyuki. Akyuki is Ezilu's daughter with his wife Okwata. Next is Ofidu. Ofidu is Obeika's friend. Let us begin the plot summary. There are two neighboring regions of Igbo land. One is Umaro, another is Ogperi. The novel is set during the 1920s in the southern part of the country where the Igbo people reside. The novel begins with a war between two neighboring regions of rural Igbo land that is Umaro and Ogperi. Umaro has six villages in it. And these six villages are linked by worshipping Ulu. Ulu is the common god that Umaro people worship. The war between Umaro and Wogberi is for the land. They wanted to claim a particular land. And this war is encouraged by a wealthy man named Nuaka. He challenges Ulu. Also in Umara, if we see, Ezilu is the chief priest of Ulu. The people of Umaro, they take advices from this chief priest, Ezilu. Many times the colonial administration, that is the white men who intrude into Africa, they try to step in to stop the war and rules in favor of Ogberi after discussing the matter with Ezilu. Ezilu is a man who always tells the truth. So the colonial administration, they have a talk with Ezilu often. Captain Winterbottom, he is a British colonial official who commands the local station to break and burn all the guns in Umaro because he doesn't want these people to fight. Meanwhile, the people of Umaro, they become angry with Ezilu because he did not take their side. He took a middle stand and he did not support Ogberi or Umaro people. This is how the situation between Umaro and Ogberi. But after five years, life in Umaro has returned to normal, which is like there were many Christian missionaries. They have ended up to Umaro and Ogberi. They started to lay roads. They started to modern the society. They try to convert the Igbo people into Christians. And they try to show that the old gods are ineffective. Now this is the time Ezilu is sending his son Odichu to learn and to get educated from the white man. Simultaneously, Ezilu and Nuaka, they have a big dispute between them for the respective villages, which they come to a state as kill and take the head. Like this is a point where the people in each village, they try to kill each other using poison. Nuaka is a man who is influenced by Ezidimili. Ezidimili is a high priest of God for Idimili. According to the tribes in Igbo land, Idimili is a lesser god in comparison to Ulu god. Also, there is a competition between the two priests of who is great. 
Now, as there is a competition existing between Igbo religion, that which God is greater than which, the British missionaries, they take this opportunity and call the Igbo Christians. Igbo Christians mean people who have converted to Christianity from the Igbo tribe. That also includes Odichi, because Odichi he started to educate from a British church. So he started to believe in Christian God. He doesn't have any belief over Ulu or Idimili. Now the missionaries they call Odichi to kill the sacred python. Actually python is seen as a servant of God Idimili. Odichi he tries to put the snake in a box and he keeps inside his house. But his family discovers the terrible deed. Also doing anything to the royal python is considered an abomination. Now this issue is heard by the priest of Idimili. That is Ezidimili. Now he sends a messenger to Ezilu in order to purify his house. Now Ezilu gets angry. He disagrees with what his messenger says. Now he asks Ezidimili to die. Now between this time, the colonial administration has commissioned a new road to be built connecting Okperi and Umaru. The British colonizers, they try to pay for Ogberi people. They do not pay for Umaru as they have run out of funds. So the Umaru people, they have to do a free labor for constructing the road. And one day, Esilu's son Obika, he goes late to work while constructing the road. He also goes by consuming wine. Knowing this, Mr. Wright, as he works in public works department, he supervises the new road. He started to yell at Obika as he is late. Also, he comes in a drunken manner. Now, there is a differentiation that the Umaro people find. Because Ogberi people, they are given labor, so they have some questions. Why are they forced to work for free when Ogberi men are paid for their labor? What makes them different? Why should they be treated like this? So the people of Umaro as well as Obika get anger. Knowing this, Obika's father is Ilu, he understands. He understands that it is a mistake of Obika. So this is the first rival that happens between Ezilu and his son Obika. Also his next son Edogo, he is the oldest son. They also have a rival because Edogo wants to know who, will, who is the favorite son of Ezilu. As Edogo comes to know that Muafa is a favorite son, now he has a hard thought of his father, why his father is choosing the favorites among his sons. Also Edogo, he considers the division in their own family. As Ezilu has sent Odichu to study in English school with a white man, it is understandable that Odichu cannot take, take up the priesthood from his father. Also, Ezilu has trained Nuafo right from his childhood. He trains him in the ways of priesthood. So, it is clearly understood that Nuafa will take up the priesthood after his father. Now, Edogo, observing all this, he has several questions in his mind that if his father chooses Nuafo as next priest, what about God Ulu? Will God Ulu choose Nuafo as a priest?
or if God chooses Edogo or Obika, then it will create conflict and division in the family and Edogo as eldest son will have to deal with it. Now knowing all this, Ezilu, he goes to his friend Akibu and asks him to speak to Ezilu. Now already the people of Umaro is in anger with Ezilu because he does not support them when there was a war between Ogberi and Umaro. Also Ezilu does not mind the division that he has in his own household. Meanwhile, Captain Winterbottom, he wants to find a man who is suitable for indirect rule. Indirect rule means somebody will be like a puppet, but the white man will rule and govern the Igbo land. Captain Winterbottom, when he approaches Ezilu for indirect rule, Ezilu refuses to come saying that the priest of Ulu does not leave his hut. Ezilu conveying this, he sends back the messenger who came from Winterbottom. Also, he says that if Winterbottom wants to visit Ezilu, then he has to come to his place. Hearing this, Winterbottom gets anger. He issues an order for Ezilu's arrest and sends two policemen to fetch him. Now the next day, Ezilu decides to go to Ogberi to find out what Winterbottom wanted. Also, Ezilu identifies that Umaro people, they continue to blame him for the white man's entry and presence. And because of this thought, they do not show proper respect to Ulu God. Now, as when the two policemen arrive to arrest Ezilu, by the time Ezilu has reached Ogberi to speak with Winterbottom. After the arrival of Ezilu in Ogberi, Winterbottom suddenly becomes ill. Now, the African servants, they decide that Ezilu must have, have a lot of power because Winterbottom is sick after the arrival of Ezilu and after the issue of warrant for Ezilu's arrest. So when Ezilu arrives, the servants become afraid. They don't want to lock up Ezilu and they don't want to arrest him. So they pretend that the guard room is a guest room and try to make him comfortable. On the very first night in Ogberi, Ezilu has a vision and realizes that his real battle is only with his own people and not with the white man. Now in his vision, he sees Noaka challenges Ulu and the people started to spit upon Ezilu saying that he is a priest of a dead god. He begins to see that the white man has been able to take advantage of Umaro's division to sow further seeds of destruction. Also, using the division, the white men started to talk about their god to Umaru people. Ezilu stays in Ogberi for few months. And first Clark, he tries to teach him a lesson by making him wait for few more months. Then he offers Ezilu the position of chief. But Ezilu refuses. Tony Clark, he gets angered and puts him inside prison and Winterbottom condemns him saying that he should keep Ezilu locked up until he learns to cooperate. But Clark begins to suffer pangs of conscience. He realizes that he doesn't have a legitimate reason to keep Ezilu imprisoned. Somehow, Clark excuses to let go Ezilu. Ezilu returns home. Now everybody is glad to see Ezilu again and Ezilu realizes that his anger was directed not against his real neighbors but against an idea that they were mocking Ulu and disrespecting Ezilu. There is a practice in Umaro that is Elizu will have to announce the feast of the new yam when the new yam festival arrives but this time he fails to announce it. 
Now his assistants come to ask if he is forgotten his duty. Also the elders of the village they come and ask to Ezilu why that he hasn't announced the feast of the new yam. Ezilu tells them that he has three sacred yams left. As he stayed in Ogberi, he could not finish those sacred yams. So he will once again announce the feast when he finishes the sacred yams. Now the elders in the village, they say that he cannot announce the feast of the new yam until he has finished all the sacred yams. Also, Ezilu gets excused that he can only eat one yam per month. So it may take three months for him to finish those yams. Hearing this, those men, they get horrified. If they wait for three months, then the crops will be ruined and the people of Umaro will suffer under famine. Also the elders, they suggest him to quickly eat those yams. And if he is not eating it, then those yams can be given to the village people. But Ezilu, he says, if he does so, then the villagers will suffer the consequences if they break the rules of Ulu God. Now John Good Country, he is a convert from Nigger Delta. He is a head of Umaru. He using this opportunity, he says that anybody who wants to offer their yams to Christian God, they can harvest their yams. Now, meanwhile, Obika, he was sick and he tries to do the funeral preparation for Amalu. Amalu is the elder in the village who had died some months back. Now, he helps with one of the funeral rituals by carrying the mask for Ogbazulo Bodo. Ogbazulo Bodo is the night spirit. When he works for this night spirit god in order to fulfill the funeral ritual for Amalu, Obika also dies. Now the people also consider Ezilu as stubborn and proud. So that particular year, many of the yams were harvested in the name of the Christian god and the crops were reaped afterwards in the name of the Christian god. As this novel comes to end, everybody in Umaro and Ogberi, they convert themselves to Christianity. As the novel concludes, the whole village people, they start to worship Christian God by replacing their Ulu. The themes of this novel is post-colonialism, replacing the tribal practices, Foes of alien religion, patriarchy because we can see the domestic duties of man's multiple wives that is Ezilu, colonial strategies, Christian evangelism. Hope this video helps. If you have query or suggestion, please write it down. Thank you for listening.